It is 7.45am on a Saturday morning. I'm off to BBC Radio to do an interview about my gigs tomorrow night and on Valentine's Day. I've been up since 4am and just kind of woke up general things. Nailed down two really good compositions for the vlog. Uh, trying to get the new coffee with Dan music written. I want to get the music written first before I start putting the video together because so much of my video editing is led by music. I'm in the kitchen as a warm-up room. At least the acoustics will probably be better than here than in the studio. Charlie. Good morning, mate. Thank you for coming oh, you're in. Welcome. Look at this beauty. <laughs> Tell me about that. 1956. Wow. Selma Mark VI. Now, if you fancy celebrating the beginning of February in style with some live music, then tonight at the Haymakers in Cambridge, the very talented composer and saxophonist Dan Forshaw will be performing. Uh, Dan was taught by uh, Ray Wilkes, a legend on the northern jazz scene and a former member of the Cedar Walton's band in New York. Dan started picking up gigs at the age of 14 and by 16 Dan was on the road with the amazing Blues Brothers Soul Review Tour. He's in the studio now. Dan, good morning sir. Good morning Charlie. I do have to correct you there quickly. It's tomorrow night about the haymakers. Listen, so. I don't write the scripts here. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm just the... Uh, I'm just. Uh, but I, I picked it up in a shop. I, I went in to sell the guy there or work I was working with an American company some saxophones that they'd asked me to, to take to this guy uh, and I walked out with this and he didn't buy the other one so one of us is a better salesman than the other but uh, I'm just, very very pleased with this one and it's, it's, it's my go-to saxophone. It's an absolute I mean it's very difficult for me to describe on the radio because I know nothing about saxophones but that is a beautiful beautiful instrument um, it, 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 it looks not battered is not the right word to use it's very used. It is yeah. Uh, it, the colour You'd be very tempted to clean that, wouldn't you? But you but, don't want to clean it because then you're cleaning the history away from it. I am. I mean, it does. It does get wiped over, and it does have to have. Well, a I mean that. DLC. I don't mean it's dirty. <laughs> I mean, I mean... Uh, something that a tool that I use a great deal. Is the saxophone an instrument that that, that, that kids are kind of picking up still, or, or or is it kind of slowly dying out? I mean, it, it's nowhere near as popular as it was sort of in the 40s and 50s. I mean, the sort of the, the, the guitar took over, and it isn't. Uh, the easiest instrument to learn. Uh, that's not to say to all my guitar friends that their instrument is very easy to learn, of course not. Uh, but it is a little bit harder. You do have to sort of um, learn to read notes, learn to play long terms and things like that. But it's certainly easier than uh, a lot of other instruments. And yeah, there are quite a lot of kids who are around playing it. And one of the things I try and do when I am teaching people is, or even performing, is try and inspire them, try and sort mm. of get them to do what I did when I heard players, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was growing up, which was, you know, I want to be able to do that. I mean, one of the things. Well, what's, what sparked your interest back back in the day? <clears throat> well, back at my dad was in bands, and my dad's a, a semi professional bass player, and he was uh, in all these Battle of the Bands competitions in Lancashire in the eighties, and the bands that always won the big Northwest finals were always the bands that had saxophone players. So he sort of was like, right, we need to get a saxophone player, and also my primary school teacher who had a band rehearsal for half an hour every single day and an hour after school, and you mm. were in the minority in my primary school if you didn't play an instrument. And that speaks volumes. I mean, the guy... I played the yeah. triangle. At the <laughs> did you Did you get a good sound out of it? Um, I managed to get two notes out of it, and I was very good at keeping up the beat, but that's as far as it went with me. <laughs> uh, listen, you're playing the Haymakers tomorrow night, as we've established. Yep. Where else can we see you, and where so, else can we see and hear your music? So, uh, my music is available uh, on all good uh, uh, iTunes, Spotify, all those kind of things. I've got a website, uh, www.damforshaw.com and cambridgesaxophone.com. Uh, I'm at the, as I said, the Haymakers tomorrow night, but then on Valentine's Day, I'm yes. doing a very, very special dinner jazz, inspired by the music 
I used to listen to as a teenager, both on BBC Radio 3 and on Jazz FM. And we're doing a very special, you know, you don't have to be an over-romantic to come along to Dinner Jazz at Saffron Hall, but it really will, it'll be a very, very special evening. I'm working with a phenomenal vocalist called Alison Beck, uh, and my new band featuring Rachel Johnson on piano, Owen Morgan on bass, and Derek Skull on the drums. Listen, you're here with your saxophone, mm-hmm. so uh, let, let's hear it. He's going to play us out. This is Dan Forshaw. Uh, sax off and it's taken it away down up to the news. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Saturday morning is hard. Playing it in a dead studio is so much harder. I hope that sounded okay. Anyway, back home and then I'm teaching now. <laughs> since 4am this morning I've got a pounding headache now and I am really starting to go into very tired mode but it's only 20 to 1 I'm heading up to Guildhall to do my class there and it feels already like 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon so I appreciate those people who can get up early and do that I can do it every now and again but I do feel like I did when the kids were babies the difference between then and now is of course I know that Hopefully I should be able to get to sleep tonight and get a reasonable night's sleep and then get up, repeat, rinse, whatever. One of the things I'm going to talk to the students about today is, and it feels weird not being able to do this with a saxophone in my hand, is taking and using a diminished scale around a blues. And that's very easy to do because, you know, predominantly you can more or less pull a whole blues scale out of dominant seventh chords and just learning the diminished scale over that. Now I did mention, oh, I'm gonna be, let me get around here. I did mention the diminished scale in this vlog here. There you go, it's up there. Um, and that's a very easy way. Watch that vlog if you're not sure what I'm talking about with diminished. But basically just using a simple diminished lick and then moving it around the blues scale. But really, you don't want to do it in a normal solo, but as a practice idea and as a learning aid, it's a really good way of understanding how that blues scale can fit Sorry, how that diminished scale can fit around a blues. Anyway, I'm mixing my words up. Um, I need to concentrate on driving. Well, instead of chatting to you guys, I will uh, see you later on. Done and dusted. It does amaze me how often I come across very talented, good, hardworking students who don't know anything about modes. Uh, we were talking about diminished scales, as I said earlier on, and just kind of no identification of mixed lydia modes or understanding of what's going on with people who've passed grade five theory, who've been playing in jazz bands for a while. Um, yeah, it always mystifies me because I always make sure my students are always on top of that. I mean, we've spent a lot of time this week going back over, playing the scales and then kind of, right, okay, play, you know, so play a G major scale, right, that's an Ionian mode. Now play G Dorian. Okay, well, that's the second mode of F major. Okay, that's the kind of way to think about it. You've got to be on top of them because you can unlock so many things if you just understand how your scales are put together and then practice the modes. Heading home, got to make pizzas with the kids for tea. So hopefully that should be good. And then an early night is definitely in order. <laughs> Make sure it all goes in. There we go. Right. It looks stunning. Right. <laughs> Fix it together with your hands carefully and let it fall over. <laughs> Careful. Ooh. 
weird from. We can't see it. Right, go eat through the tomato sauce. Can you turn the page over, Amy, in the book? Turn the page over. Right, Amy, can you remember the tomato pizza sauce? Yes, it gets that. It turns four shallots. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Help me spread it out. Yeah. Go on. Help me spread it out. Pull the cheese. Yay. Just in a little bit. This is right, there we go. <laughs> ah, I missed the end of the vlog yesterday. So sorry. I basically was so tired. I was in bed by 9 pm fast asleep by 10 and didn't have a chance to sort of finish the vlog off so the pizzas were delicious it was great making those things with kids if you've got young kids yourself they really do enjoy kind of making food together it makes a whole mess so i'm really grateful that katie was able to help clean it all up as i was too uh thank you very much for watching the vlog today don't forget to check out yesterday's vlog on this side and this is what i was up to this time last year if you don't already please hit the subscribe button there's no vlog today as such but i'm going to try and do my gig tonight, Sunday, live on YouTube. We'll see what happens. YouTube live is often a real pain in the rear end, but we'll see what we can do, and hopefully we'll have it on live for you. If it's not on YouTube, head over to my Facebook page, deadeasyfacebook.com forward slash Dan and you'll be able to view it there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you really soon.